Hello and welcome to the NBS show, episode number 497. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and it's been a while. Um, remember the rule when I mentioned about not having uh, more than three news? Yeah, it, 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 it kind of gotten that way for a while. I mean, there were some in-betweens, but uh, those are mostly toys that are mostly news and stuff. So, yeah... This time around, we got some pretty good news. And before we start, I need to drink my uh, cup of joe. Anyway, let's start in with the first piece of news. Maritime Bay Adventure officially launched today. And by today, it's May 27. And we've kind of been nine days away, I think. Or 11. I don't know. So, uh, Maritime Bay Adventure has officially released on... Uh, officially released today G4 never got a console game how do you think G5 will do with a completely new category of ponies for ponies if you have no idea what this is we've been covering it for a while now you can find all of our previous news posts trailer posting let's play and various other things over this label the general idea though is a game about exploring maritime bay doing mini games customizing your horses and uh, and and following a story about restoring magic it also appears it also apparently has co-op we'll be diving into it soon so keep an eye out for uh, a bit of feedback in a week or so uh, get it on Amazon or Steam. So anyway, mm. <coughs> so I've seen the game, haven't bought it, and I'm contemplating on which version to get personally. And full disclaimer, I do know that the game is not great. It's a children's game, and I understand that. When I purchase this game, I'm purchasing the branding which is the My Little Pony branding but I also haven't played it yet so I got no idea if it's good or not so other than that um, yeah it's available on all major consoles I think uh, Xbox PlayStation Switch and also Steam so that means you can play it on every possible um, machine, gaming machine, not including mobile, mobile something else. So uh, man, um, what do I want to see more because I haven't played it yet and I am really interested in playing this and feeling like how, how hard it works. It's it's a company making games for kids, but I, I want to feel the passion. I, I want to feel uh, them putting in a lot of effort, them putting in a lot of love into the game and cr just creating it. The IP is one thing, but w when you play something, you can feel it. Oh, like these people really love uh, this game. They they're putting their all in it. And sometimes, with brand games, you won't get that. Like licensed games, that you, you won't get that because it's just a cash cow generator and whatnot. But for My Little Pony, uh, it's one of those titles where they haven't had a game in a long while. And G4 was the best place to do it because, well, G4 is hot. A lot of fans love the, uh, what you call this, game. And they did a lot of mobile games. So, yeah, uh, that's cool and all. But what about consoles? And uh, what during the G point uh, three point five days, they had what um, a game advanced game, the uh, the um, Game Boy Advance or Game Boy DS uh, title. So, there 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 are there for previous generation so 
G4 not having a game was kind of console game, mind you, uh, was sucky. But the good folks at uh, Main Six tried to do a fan fighting game for it, but nah, they they, they cancelled it out. And now Main Six has done them fighting herbs and is doing pretty well. Herbs going to Evo, yay! As I heard, I'm not hundred percent sure if this year they are. Oh man, this is confusing. But anywho, um, as for this one, when I buy the game, I will make a let's play about it and you guys can check it out. I'm not sure if it's on this channel or on my personal channel, but we'll see. So let's move on to the next news. Next news is Black Griffin and um, Basque, ba sick, Basic, the Brown Brothers. Dominate at Americans Got Talent. <clears throat> uh, we have something interesting. Uh, sorry, we have something interesting. Uh, oh, we have some interesting fringe news today from America's Got Talent. Old school fandom musician Black Griffin and Basic both appear on America's Got Talent doing a combo of songs and improvisation for their entry into the contest. Their combined talent showed, sorry, the combined talent wowed the judges and they ended up getting a thumbs up from all four. Unfortunately, they, there isn't any pony here, but enough people have sent it that I think it's, uh, it will be interesting for everyone who was around back when these guys were dropping timeless horse music for all of us to enjoy. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, I've checked out the um, auditions and it was great. Um, it was one of those things where it, <laughs> they, uh, this, 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 these guys had, have talent and um, them popping here was just a matter of time. And yeah, oh man, Basics has really awesome uh, <coughs> talent in creating music and playing music. And so does Gabe. I think Gabe's brother, um, Basics here is called Nathan, Natal Nathan, I think. They, they, they mentioned it in the audition. So anyway, if I, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So um yeah, Gabe or Black Griffin here has his own YouTube channel and he does impressions over there too. So yeah, this this is quote unquote nothing new for us who has been following them for a while now. And um overall, their their performance was pretty cool. Where um, Nate Nathan here played music according to what the Judges wanted. Um, their whole gimmick was pick a song, pick a character, and there's four judges. So there's two, four, six, eight. There's eight uh, choices. So uh, they they played uh, the songs and did the impression of the characters while singing and so on, which Gabe is already good at. And all in all. <coughs> It was a wonderful performance. A lot of other things that they mentioned in the audition was both of them were autistic, uh, highly autistic, uh, sorry, high function autistics, or autism, sorry. Sorry, they were both high functioning autism, oh, man, what was it? Do, 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. Autistics, yes, autistics. Yeah, they have autism and they're high functioning. Aut uh, autistics, <laughs> uh, poodles. But yeah, it's it's really fun to just watch, and even though they're not pumping out pony music, it's it's just fun to know that hey, I knew them before they were popular. And at the same time, too. Gabe saying that he's nervous on stage. I call bullcrap on that man. Like, 
you perform at BronyCon, you perform at a lot of other places, and you perform for the um, Navy band, so that's not a surprise. But hey, I mean, it's, it's all good. Like, you had fun, everybody on the theater had fun, and I just hope that when you go to the next stage, you guys dominate there too, and just um just just carry on man just just go as far as you can so anyway moving on to the next news more plush on the way from symbiote studios following the rainbow dash and twilight release last year symbiote studios has expanded into even more ponies applejack and pinkie pie are both plushified now and this that over on their website they have sorry they also have Alicon Twilight if you want her with wings you can find them over on the website or over here each plush clocks in at 12 inches in height they also have cutie marks pins if you are interested in those so yeah yeah um basically it's the same twilight plush just at wings haha <laughs> fun fun so seth was it yeah seth failed to mention that the prices for them are not the same as before um previously rainbow dash and twilight were at well at least twilight is what 25 dollars uh rainbow dash is at 30 Wing Twilight is at 30, Pinky is at 30, and Applejack is at 30. Now the real question is, why was Twilight 12? Sorry, no, um, why was Twilight $25? Um, just clicking a look, see, and I, I don't see any differences. I mean, besides Rainbow Dash having more fabric to work with because of her rainbow mane and tails, compared to Twilight, I, I guess. Honestly, I got no idea. But Applejack has a hat. Yeehaw! So, if you are interested, you can order them on symbiotestudios.com slash pony and you will get a plush, I guess. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if they ship worldwide. But there's always a forwarding company that you can always try to get your plush. And moving on to the final news. <clears throat> Funko's new ridiculous NFT gambling for My Little Pony pop figures. <sighs> so let's just help me. Because everything has to be ruined in 2020X plus. Funko has decided to go the NFT route on the new My Little Pony uh, my Little Pony pop sets. Who's writing this stuff? Is still okay. Instead of just letting you buy the figures directly like a sane collectible, you need to go the convoluted route of hoping you get a physical pony figure by buying a bunch of NFT packs and praying to the RNG gods that you get in the piece needed for a physical one every spin this every time you spin the slot is ten dollars you receive five nfts that you trade to complete sets to earn tokens that let you redeem the ponies you have 150 120 days to do it in which case funko sends over another token that lets you claim the actual Needless to say, these ponies are probably going to be incredibly expensive to acquire. Contemplating in the overall marketplace, there is a pinpoint in light of the uh, pinpoint of light at the end of this awful tunnel. Though you also have a one point seventy two percent chance of a legendary nft that includes redemption on its own 
or a 0.28% chance of bad luck. You know, the more I'm reading this, the more I feel like I just want to give up on life. Okay, so let's take a look see at the figures. <clears throat> All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Franco figures, what, what, what more can I say, really? I mean, they're just Funko figures. And let's, let's take a look at the website, yeah. Okay, oh god, this, this is the website. Pop packs, $10 for 5 standard packs. Thirty dollars for fifteen premium packs. And what else can I say really? I mean I know a thing or two about collecting cards. I mean yeah. And that's just a small sample of what I got. Like if I were to show you, I got more. So I know a few things about collecting trash. But this, this is just... <coughs> I, I, I'm trying to remember that. I, I never talked to you guys about NFTs or my views on NFTs and so on. Because um, at the time I don't think I needed to because why would I write I mean why why would I even need to talk about NFT to you guys and Honestly, I, 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 no, this is just, no, no matter how bad you want it, this is just, no, how do I put this to you folks at home? The Funko figure themselves, a lot of people don't really like them. They say they're plastic trash. They say that I could spend my money on something better. I could spend my money on uh, Kotobukiya figures. I could spend my money on um, the Smile Company figures. And so on. And... Funko did a few good figures back in the days. Like like this one. This one is a Funko figure. They did it well. And the vinyl figures that they did for, those were those were cool. Those were great. I I, I appreciate those. Those were good. You did you did good. But this this now that's not good. <laughs> A lot of people complain that saying uh, they say that oh no this this is trash I, I don't like it I don't like the BDIs they scare they scare me and some people will say ah oh, it's not that bad I know it's freaky but take a look at Derpy her, her eyes are off kilted and that's cute <laughs> and then now you do this. <sighs> It's one of those things where, why? Why do you need it to be an NFT? 
the the whole thing around NFT has a very negative stigma around it, and you introduce this silly little project that you're trying to do by getting digipacks to. And here's the thing, I, I've been thinking in my head personally, like, how can I make NFT work? Because um, NFTs in themselves are kind of a quote unquote scam because you buy a digital product that you need to get in its own community and s sell it with other. So the way I was thinking about it is this, you have a game and you control the environment, control the ecosystem. So it's similar to DLCs, DLCs and whatnot, like uh, costumes and whatnot. But in here you can earn costumes and you can set it off to another person for not a ridiculous high price because that's kind of dumb why would you want to buy the limited edition shirt for billions or hundreds of thousands of dollars just sell it for 10 bucks and be off like you just trade the license to another person and it's all in that community alone and it kind of works in the sense where if I were to buy a DLC and I'm fed up with the costume or gun skin that I have, I can sell it off and make back money from what I spend and so on. I mean, my idea probably won't go off because it's not making big companies a lot of money because companies want money and my idea doesn't really produce money. So with this one here, they want you to buy digital packs of digital cards where you can just only digitally look at them. I'm just going to use the word digital in front of everything. So you get digital packs with five digital cards where you can just take a look see on your digital screen and collect them. And once you get the full set, you may be lucky enough to buy a physical pony figure that may not look great at all. And because of how rare it is, it's going to be sold very expensively in the quote-unquote collector's market. And... Oh, <sighs> I'm done with this topic. This topic can go jump bridge. So anywho, let's move on to the next topic. Next topic is no, no, not next topic. Next topic, I guess. Yeah. Um. Let's not. Next topic is what I've been doing with my week, month, or whatever it is. I've been long gone. So, as you guys know, I play D and D. That's still going on, and I also play a bit of Magic the Gathering, hence the cards just now. And uh, this time around, I'm not really playing, rather organizing. And it seems that I am the tournament organizer for my group now. So um, that's been taking up a bit of my time where I need to think of achievements and rules and whatnot and points and just a lot of things that I need to consider going forward and so on. So, uh, yeah, um, it's it's quite interesting. Uh, I have to say, the lead, uh, I have to say, it's very interesting where I get to be the judge and whatnot about this tournament where I get to write all the rules, which is fun. I would rather play, but uh, this is one of those things where I'm gaining experience by doing this. 
Um, I would say that um, the first week was okay. Um, we ended up with nine people joining, and the second week we ended up with about eleven, which is kind of okay. Um, one table has four people, so that's three tables minus one player. So yeah, um, next week is going to be a bit different. So we'll have to wait and see. I've done a lot of uh, seeding, which was I pick players, I put them into groups of four, and see who fights who and so on. And at the end of the season, the person with the highest points get to pick a card from the pile that I have. Uh, some of the cards are worth and some of them are really worth catchings. So we will have to wait and see and how and see where that goes because um, there's I think about 12 to 13 participants probably yay I don't really fully remember but still there is a lot and it's going to go really well I, I hope <laughs> so here's hoping that uh, week three and on will be really amazing so anyway uh, let's wrap things up <clears throat> if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at the mr gmail.com links uh sorry yes and also you can catch us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at the MBS show and my personal twitter account is at Norman sanzo uh, also please subscribe and rate us on itunes youtube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also stitcher radio and also our facebook page you can also catch us on com. Links will be in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you can catch me and friends reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, specials. Um, what else? Episode, comic, specials, and movies. Yes, mov- movies is the thing. And sometimes we like to do other things other than ponies, and those can be video games, comics, cartoons, manga, animes, and many more. Uh, <clears throat> if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya.